Thank you for watching, and for a full transcript, visit www.funforthedisabled.com. We hope you enjoy! This is Vanessa Harris with Fun for the Disabled. I'm here with Mark Nobriga today of the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities. He's going to be talking about HOMOD. Take it away, Mark. Hi. Um, let me catch up here for a second. I got to um, share my screen. So give me a second while I start the presentation. Here we go. Do you see the screen? Yes, I do. Okay, so what we're here today to talk about is the Home Odd program. Um, before I do that, we have a couple interesting flyers that we typically hand out. One of those flyers is our funding resource flyer. Uh, the front of it gives you a little bit of an explanation about Home Odd services. The rear of it has a ton of resources that deal directly with home modifications and how to obtain funding for them. Of course, HOMOD, the program with MOPD, the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities, is one of those resources. Um, in addition to our home modification program, something we provide in conjunction with it is assistive technology. We sometimes refer to it as assistive devices as well. Um, those can be anything that is equipment related to the modification we provide. So an example of that would be a tub transfer bench or a, um, an elevated toilet seat above a standard height or an ADA toilet. Um, those can all be things that we provide as part of our program. Now, the Home Mod program is simply put a program that provides accessible modifications within the city of Chicago. The modifications do have a maximum of $15,000 per project. It's not a, a dollar amount per se, but it is a limit per, per client that we can spend per year. Um, all of our work, of course, is done by licensed contractors. We obtain permits for everything. And it's really, when you think about it, a one-stop shop to receiving an accessible modification to your home. The people that can participate in our program have to be City of Chicago residents under the age of 59. I will go over later a couple of our collaborations that allow us to serve seniors and CHA housing inhabitants. Um, so the Home Mod program is exactly what it sounds like. It is a program that alters the interior or exterior of the home to be accessible for people with disabilities. Um, one of the things we do are lifts and ramps for the exterior of the home. That is pretty much one of the most popular things we do because life safety and egress and ingress are a great concern. Um, for just life safety and fire safety for people with disabilities. These lifts and or ramps we provide allow an individual with a disability to exer, exit and enter a home independently, which is one of our main priorities of this program. In addition, um, you can see that we, on this slide, there are pictures, and one of those pictures is of a lift in the front of the home. A secondary picture on this slide is also a roll-in shower. So some of the things we do in homes for accessibility within the bathroom are uh, one of the main things we do are is take out tubs. So what we do is we essentially do a gut rehab of a bathroom where we take out a tub and all surface mounted fixtures and we really redo everything including the plumbing behind the wall, the plumbing under the floor, we adjust the drainage for showers, we adjust the floor pitch, we adjust the stability of the floor and even the material that goes down on the floor. Um, of course, that in some homes mean we're doing more work and in other homes we're doing less work. And that's really based on what we see in moments we open the walls. So in this bathroom, we can see that we've maintained the ventilation to the outside with glass block window and a, and a door, that, a little screen door that opens up for ventilation. Some buildings already have built-in ceiling ventilation. Um, we have uh, increased the floor size of this particular bathroom by removing the tub and installing a roll-in shower. 
without the tub present, you can see that the floor ratio is vastly bigger. And having stood inside a bathroom with a missing tub, you can see that there's actually, it feels visually, and it actually is a larger floor plate, which allows a person with mobility disabilities, especially in a wheelchair or a walker, to have more room to navigate and or turn around within spaces. Um, we typically take out the vanity and put in a pedestal sink or a wall hunk sink. That allows for, again, more turning radiuses below, and it also allows for either a side or a frontal approach to um, daily activities of living, such as brushing, um, flossing, getting ready in the morning, washing faces, and things like that. Um, the toilets are typically either, it depends on what we see there, but the toilets can be modified and or replaced to have an extended height toilet, which is essentially a toilet that's 19 inches off the ground, and then you add in the seat height. Um, you can look into the shower area. You can see that we've added controls up and down. So these controls are things you can take off the wall, uh, such as the um, shower handle and the shower valve itself come off the wall. The sprayer comes off the wall and you can move all of that stuff around. You'll see in the bathtub area that was made into a shower area, the addition of grab rails for stability. Um, we can add additional grab rails on the floor, near the toilet, wall, sink, anywhere that's needed. The mirror on the wall is actually a mirror that can be pulled and or rotated downward. So it can give a, um, a perpendicular approach to a person in the wheelchair. Obviously, somebody sitting in and seated in a wheelchair is lower. Therefore, the mirror can rotate forward and out, which points it downward. Um, it's hard to see in the picture, but there is a little gasket on the floor that's clear. It blends in with the tile, but once you're inside the shower, you can move the shower curtain to stay inside the gasket, and that's how we keep the water in the shower area. Once it hits the inside of the shower curtain, it will also then go down and into the sloped floor of the drain. Um, moving on to the third picture on this slide, you can see another not as common modification, but it's also something we do. Kitchen modification is what we're talking about here. The kitchen modifications are sometimes difficult. Um, kitchens are extremely expensive. Um, so we have to limit what we do in kitchens. But what you can see in this instance is that we've modified the countertops. We've lowered the kitchen cabinets. Um, so they're slightly accessible to somebody with limited mobility. What you don't see is that once the upper cabinets are open, there are shelves that actually pop out and rotate down. Um, that's all can, that can all be done and achieved from a seated position. You can see that we've created work areas next to the stove. You can see that we've created work areas under the sink and that we padded the sink drains with a, um, a heat, uh, heat resistant material that stops you from getting scalded from the hot water that drains down the sink itself. Um, so those are three simple, not simple, but they are modifications that we can provide to the home. There are many more. We do uh, widening of doorways, we do ceiling lifts, we do stair lifts, and all kinds of modifications that are directly tied into the home for people with disabilities. This is a next slide that just gives you some of the idea of what we do here at Home Mod and how many of each we do. So as you can see, lifts are by far the greatest modification we do. And it's also the number one priority we put behind providing a first time accessibility within the home. The bathrooms obviously come in second. Those are our two largest um, projects we provide and make up more than 50% of all jobs we do. Um, chairlifts, another one. Other is a conglomeration of other multiple disabilities and multiple solutions for the home for those disabilities. As you can see in Chicago, ramps are a rarity, um, and that is simply due to the, the, the lot requirements, the height requirements of the ramp, and the size of these ramps, and how large they have to be based on the property dimension. So, um, in case anybody knows, a ramp that has to go up one foot has to go out 12 inches. I'm sorry, a ramp that goes up one inch has to go out one foot. So that's a one to 12 slope and anything going out, um, obviously those dimensions add up 
and over time make it hard to put a ramp on the property. Um, assisted devices are, again, what we talked about, the jobs that require assisted devices in addition to the home modifications themselves. We do collect a large set of data. We've been studied by several, um, several entities, including the federal government, HUD, Woodstock Institute, and they've provided studies on the services we provide to the community and shown and proved that providing a home mod is far less costly than institu institutionalization, which is what sometimes happens when a home becomes inaccessible to an individual as they're aging in place. Um, so that is really the conclusion of our program. I did want to go over two small things. Well, not small things, but they are two things that we're doing currently. We have a collaboration with the Department of Housing where we provide lifts for seniors. Um, that is something very new and something we're working with right now. Um, we are currently involved in that and lifts are going up for them. We also have a collaboration with the CHA and we are providing their accessible modifications to CHA units within the city of Chicago as well. So we actually do work for not only the mayor's office for people with disabilities, but the Department of Housing and the CHA. Um, so that really concludes our presentation for today. I am going to try to figure out how to stop sharing my screen <laughs> eventually. And there I am back. Um, and then, of course, this is the part where I would open up the presentation to take any questions that may come around. OK, I have a question for you. This is related to you indicated that this program is for people um, less than the age of 59. Correct. Okay, so you also indicated that there were people who um, became disabled as they aged. So senior citizens maybe sometimes have disabilities and they're not eligible for this program, but they may need um, a bathroom modification or a kitchen modification and not necessarily a lift. Is that something that's covered, you said, under the Department of Housing, where would they go if they're a senior citizen and they need um, some other um, modification to their home? So if you are a senior citizen, there's two paths really you can take. Um, so as I mentioned, the Mayor's Office for People with Disability does have a collaboration where we provide lifts to the SARPS program. The SARPS program within it has a program called the Senior Ramp and Lift Program. MOPD, our program is the person that provides or the entity that provides those lifts. Um, the SARPS program is would be the program that would provide any other accessible modifications, and that includes quick things within the bathroom and or anything really that is needed. Um, small accessible modifications to the uh, to, for seniors is uh, more than it sounds, it does repairs as well. So it does all kinds of little things for the home to keep people in their homes and help with the needs of seniors. So from what I understand also, the Small Accessible Repairs for Seniors program is currently retooling. Their main larger portion, which is the SARPS program, Small Accessible Repairs for Seniors, and they're going to be working with their statement of work to see if they can provide or define that program a little better, I think, and perhaps maybe that will be the inclusion of exactly what you're asking for, which is maybe a bathrooming. Okay. So that's something we'll have to wait for, though. I know there's a couple meetings coming up with them, and so we'll see how they tool or retool their program to be more inclusive of all the needs of the seniors population that they have. And that's with the Department of Housing? Yeah, so the Department of Housing is the current owner of the Small Accessible Repairs for Seniors program. That program has been passed around through the years. Um, it used to be, I think, with Department of Buildings. It used to be with Senior Services. It is currently housed in the Department of Housing. Okay. All right. So getting back to the Home Mod program specifically, how does one apply? So the home mod program is an easy application. It, um, it, you can apply many places. Um, one and the easiest one is um, simply by 
calling 311 and using the keyword home mod, H-O-M-E-M-O-D, and they will be able to put you on a list to receive uh, an application in either electronic format, fillable online, or through a paper format if you're more comfortable with paper. Um, another way to get our application is by going to the City of Chicago's website, typing in the word disability and or home mod, H-O-M-E-M-O-D, hitting enter, and then it should link you to our actual home mod application. Again, this is an electronic document. It can be downloaded, it can be printed, or it can be filled out online and submitted to us. All the instructions for that are actually on the application themselves. Um, the last part is you can simply call 744-MOPD-312, and um, they can send you out an application in any format you would like. We do have applications in English, Chinese, Spanish, and we can get any other translations done that are needed. And how long does it take um, to get the process started between the time that the application is submitted and it's accepted? The average day, the average amount of days required to perform a home modification, and as I've went over this um, application process and the entire program and the types of jobs we do, it varies greatly because of the complexity of some of the jobs versus other jobs being more simple. The average job time takes roughly 111 days from the day you submit your application to the day we bill out and your warranty for each project goes into effect. So you could be looking at anywhere from, I'd say three, four to six months. Okay. okay. And then, and of course, the longest part of course is ordering equipment and getting permits because we do everything by the book. So um, the two, you know, you apply, you'll, you'll see us out there within a week or two weeks and we'll get our assessment done in another week and you'll know exactly what's happening within two to three weeks. Now from then on comes the hard part, then comes the architectural drawings, the ordering of equipment, setting up crews, getting permits, doing architectural drawings, um, price estimating, approvals, everything that comes along with construction in the city of Chicago. Okay. What if um, it's determined that a modification is going to cost more than $15,000? Now, there's a couple things that we do before we even tell you that the modification is going to go over the $15,000 amount. We one design things and take on jobs that we know don't do that. Um, Two, if it does for some reason, let's say there's a unique situation and the cost of the job looks like it's gonna go over and it does go over, uh, me and my team will go through um, really just um, project management and try to figure out if we can reduce the cost of the job in any way. Can we design it differently such that it costs less money? Can we reduce the scope of the job and still provide a meaningful accessible modification that may not be 100% of what this individual wants, but it may solve an accessible issue. So there are many tiers of what we do to reduce the cost to make sure that um, we can still provide a service. And if we have done all those things and we still come out with the fact that this job might just cost more than um, we're allowed to spend, we have two methods we can do. We can um, offer a copay um, to the client, meaning that if the job is $15,520 and there's no way we can get it to $15,000, we might offer the client a copay where they pay anything over $15,000, which would be $500 some dollars in that example. Or we can also provide what's called a hardship letter um, where the client can um, claim hardship and then get past for that overage without having to pay for it as well. Okay, thank you very much. Mark Nobriga from the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities Home Modification Program, Home Mod. Um, and you can contact them by going to, how, tell us again how you can contact the Home Mod Program, Mark. Um, you can go to the City of Chicago um, main website and look up the uh, Office of Disabilities, which is the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities under the Department tab. Once in there, you'll see Home Mod on the main page of that um, uh, the Mayor's Office for 
Disabilities main web page. So HOMOG will be right there on the front page and you can click on that. And you'll see all our numbers and contact information there. Um, if you have a really good memory, you can always reach me at 312-743-1523. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. This is yeah. Vanessa Harris signing off for Fun for the Disabled. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.